Hey everyone, I'm Rob Schweitzer from Historic Hudson Valley and I welcome you to our event, the Great Jack-O-Lantern Blaze, the country's biggest and most spectacular jack-o-lantern display. This year, nearly 200,000 people from all 50 states are coming to see Blaze. I'm gonna take you on a little tour, showing you how we hand carve and display more than 7,000 jack-o-lanterns in dozens of awesome installations. I hope you enjoy it, so let's get started. Perhaps the most popular display at Blaze is this pumpkin planetarium. It's pumpkins with stars all around you. It's very Instagram friendly, and it is a great spot to propose, which many have done, I, I think, successfully. One installation that I think is really special and timely highlights the bravery and service of our first responders. We've got special displays like this one, showcasing our firefighters, police, and ambulance personnel, everybody who's been on the front lines during the pandemic. Another huge fan favorite is this amazing pumpkin carousel. We love to see jack-o'-lanterns on the move. My good friend, Michael Nattiello, is creative director of Blaze. He's gonna show you how you can create a little bit of Blaze magic at home with your own pumpkins. When I pick out a pumpkin for jack-o'-lantern carving, I look for a couple key things. First of all, the stem. If the stem is nice and strong, chances are your pumpkin's nice and strong. The color of the pumpkin is also another indicator. A dark orange pumpkin typically has a thick wall and will last you longer than a light orange pumpkin. And finally, I like to just kind of tap it. If it sounds like a nice hollow pumpkin, then chances are it's going to be good for scooping and carving. Traditionally, people cut off the top of their pumpkin. We at the jack-o'-lantern blaze, however, cut a hole in the bottom. That prevents the top from falling in, as you might know. It also allows the pumpkin to retain its structural integrity. Now I'm going to take my spoon and scoop out the seeds and the guts. And today I'm going to carve the great Jack Lantern Blaze's logo. So we're going to use the mouth below the stem and the eyes above. Right, so I'm just going to cut the mouth away from the eyes. So after I've attached the pumpkin pattern in the right location, I'm going to transfer the shapes to the pumpkin using a sharp pencil. So once the stencil has been transferred, it's time to remove the paper and to start carving. Now before carving, you're just going to take a couple safety tips to mind. You want to try to cut away from yourself as much as possible and use a sharp tool. Don't use a dull knife. You want to put your knife perpendicular to the surface of the pumpkin and use a gentle sawing motion to cut along the line. So once you have a chunk that you think is going to be able to come out easily, put your hand inside the pumpkin and push it out. Now I'm all done roughing out the shapes. You can take it another step further with a nice sharp knife and clean up any areas that look raggy. And finally I like to take a, just a dry paintbrush and clean it out. So once a jack-o'-lantern has been carved, I recommend washing it down one more time with warm, soapy water. Make sure it's thoroughly dry after washing it. And then lastly, I clean the cuttings using vinegar. A little vinegar will kill any germs or bacteria that are on the surface of the pumpkin. So once your jack-o'-lantern has been washed and thoroughly dried, it's time to light it up. And there's nothing more classic than a votive candle inside a jack-o'-lantern. That said, there are many LED electric lights on the market that you can use for safety's sake. If you're using a candle, always keep an eye on it. Never leave it unattended. Remember that hole in the bottom? Look how easy that is. Just put them right under there. Well, I hope these tips help you carve an awesome jack-o'-lantern. I want to wish everyone a very happy Halloween. <laughs>